Welcome again to the Prada Museum in Madrid for more of our weekly sessions in English, made possible with the generosity of the American friends of the Prada Museum. And today we have to start off by stating the obvious that I have two paintings behind me that look like they are exactly the same. One is by Titian, painted around 1550, and the other one is by Rubens, painted around 80 years later. And this brings a few questions to mind. Like, why paint a copy in the first place? And we'll talk about that today. And also, why is this in the Central Gallery? Right now we're in the Central Gallery of the museum. And why put a copy here in the Central Gallery with so many works in storage? Why put such valuable wall space? Why dedicate such valuable wall space to, to a copy? And we'll think a bit about those ideas today. So first, let's look at Titian's painting. So Titian painted this around 1550, this Adam and Eve, <clears throat> which eventually ended up in the Royal Collection, and this is why we have it here at the Prado. Most of the paintings here at the Prado come from the Spanish Royal Collection, and it depicts the biblical story of the first man and woman in the moment when Eve is accepting, when she's picking the forbidden fruit from the devil, from uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the devil here takes the form of a snake, but his upper half is actually the form of a child. And we see him kind of encouraging, helping Eve to pick the fruit while he's looking down at Adam. And Adam and Adam, and Titian included uh, an animal in this painting here by Eve's feet, a fox. According to the Bible, Eve was the first to try the fruit, and then she convinced Adam. And the fox is an animal that's associated with untrustworthiness, with cunning. And having the fox here kind of links Eve with those attributes. And now let's look at our copy. But first, let's think a little bit um, about why make a copy. And we need to kind of erase what we think today about copies and the value of originality and the value of reproductions because those concepts just weren't the same in the 17th century. Copies were great ways to, a legitimate way to reproduce an image that was already an established success. It was a way for an artist to learn, to learn the process, the working techniques of another artist and to link himself with that tradition of painting. And it's also a way for an artist to kind of make a statement, almost really to to dare to compare himself with the likings of an, art, uh, with an artist that's so highly esteemed, like Rubens is doing here with Titian. And Rubens, aside from a painter, he was also a diplomat. So he traveled frequently, and on his trips to Madrid, he was able to see the great collection of Titian's paintings that were amassed by the Spanish kings. And they were so partial to Titian and to Venetian painting in general. Then and even today, the Spanish collections were known for the high quality of Venetian painting. And so when he was here, Rubens took the opportunity to copy some of these compositions. But copies are also opportunities for painters to put their own twist on a painting, to make a few adjustments, to have their own interpretation. And this brings us to some of the differences. The first one that we'll notice is the child at the top, this serpent with the upper half of the child. In the other painting, the child is looking at Adam. But Rubens has decided to make a change. Rubens decided to have the child look at Eve. And this kind of emphasizes her guilt in the story. Another difference is the parrot. Rubens added this parrot right by Adam as a symbol of goodness. And if we look at his face, it almost has this human expression of concern or of fear as he's looking at the scene that's about to unfold. He looks like he's worried about what he's seeing. And this kind of reflects Adam's psychological state because he's near Adam the same way the fox was near Eve. And another major difference is in Adam's upper body, in the torso. Let's look again at Titian's painting for one minute. We can see it. Um, that Titian based his upper body of Adam on a sculpture called the Dying Gaul, a Roman sculpture. And this is a figure that is kind of halfway lying down, but, but Titian kind of repositioned him to sit him upright. And because of this, he added 
these leaves here to cover Adam's nakedness. Now Rubens also was inspired by classical sculpture, but he used a different visual source. He based his torso for Adam on the Belvedere torso, which is now in the Vatican Museum. It's much more vigorous, much more robust, more muscular. It's more fitting for Rubens' aesthetic. Uh, it kind of reduces the, the need to cover his nakedness because of the shift in position. And uh, it also goes with the more intense color palette. So this brings us to our last question. Why are these here in the Central Gallery? It's actually not very common to see this kind of a comparison in a permanent exhibit at a museum. This is something that's more typical of a temporary exhibit because a museum can pull from their permanent collection and also works that are loaned from other collections. And the fact that we have this here, a great work of art and its visual source, really speaks to one of the unique qualities of the Prada Museum. Um, so we're so fortunate to be able to have this. And also, Venetian painting is so important for history of art in Europe in general, but, but specifically in Spain. And we have an extensive collection of it here at the Prado, and especially of Titian. It's really a foundational element of the collection, and not just because of the amount of Titian that we have, but because of the important influence on some of the most emblematic painters here in the Prado, like Rubens, and Velázquez, and Goya, and all of these are painters that we can see at some point in the Central Gallery. They're either on display or we can see them uh, from the Central Gallery. And with that, we'll end our weekly session in English for today. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next Wednesday.